our existence. At this moment, we transition from an afternoon service that has all the richness, all the elements of every service we typically do, the prayers that we are commonly used to, into Yizkr, these prayers of remembrance and words of hope. Our Yizkr service is something that we do four times during the year, not only at this holiday of Yom Kippur, but at the three festivals throughout the year. These are the times that we set aside not for our annual yortzite. We do that every week, not for sitting shiva or for shloshim. This is the time we set aside four times a year to remember those we've lost as a community, those we've lost in our own lives. So as we turn to page 28, we enter into these sacred words of Yizkur, beginning with the chant of Eli, Eli, beautiful words that were written not too long ago in the 1940s by a young woman from Hungary who was still in Europe at that time. This is the hour of memory, and this is our house of comfort. Wounded by loss, we retreat from life. Our synagogue gathers us in. Into this place, we bring stories and prayers, unanswered questions, tears that need to be shed, lives recollected and carried within us, moments of courage and laughter and pain. This day embraces them all. This place embraces us all. Now the heart opens in sorrow, for we are time subjects, and all that we love we must lose. So let us hold fast to the love that remains and cherish the light of the sun. Today all of us walk the mourner's path. Together may we find strength. On the next page, page 29, you'll notice that this page is set up almost like an ancient page of Talmud. There's a text in the middle that's sort of the foundational text, and then all around it on the page are other words that come from different sources that somehow relate to that original thought in the middle. We're going to take a few moments now where you can either think your own personal thoughts at this moment, or we would encourage you to read silently parts of this page and perhaps even focus on one of these recollections that means the most to you. As we do that to ourselves, we're privileged to have the music of Jordan Broder and Jim Gabriel to guide us in this moment of thought and meditation.
We read responsively on page 30. At birth, a miracle. Emerging into light, we breathe it in. And every day, every breath. The light within us, unique and precious. When breath has ceased and life has gone, the, and the spark that lived inside the ones we love, their light is ours, their radiance now burns in us. So we light candles to keep our love alive. A light unique and precious, a ne'er tamid that lights our days. We continue on page 31.
we read together on page 32. The death of a loved one is the most profound of all sorrows. The grief that comes with such a loss is intense and multifaceted, affecting our emotions, our bodies, and our lives. Grief is preoccupying and depleting. Emotionally, grief is a mixture of raw feelings such as sorrow, anguish, anger, regret, longing, fear, and deprivation. Grief may be experienced physically as exhaustion, emptiness, tension, sleeplessness, or loss of appetite. Grief invades our daily lives in many sudden gaps and changes, like that empty place at the dinner table, or the sudden loss of affection and companionship, as well as in many new apprehensions, adjustments, and uncertainties. The loss of a loved one throws every aspect of our lives out of balance. The closer we were to the person who died, the more havoc the loss creates. Love does not die quickly. Hence to grieve is also to celebrate the depths of the union. Tears are then the jewels of remembrance, sad but glistening with the beauty of the past. So grief in its bitterness marks the end, but it also is praise to the one who is gone. Page 33. The death of a parent. Move to the front of the line, a voice says, and suddenly there is nobody left standing between you and the world to take the first blows on their shoulders. This is the place in books where part one ends and part two begins and there is no part three. The slate is wiped not clean, but like a canvas, painted over in white, so that a whole new landscape must be started, bits of the old still showing underneath. Those colors sadness lends to a certain hour of evening. Now the line of light at the horizon is the hinge between earth and heaven, only visible a few moments as the sun drops its rusted padlock into place. said in the name of Rabbi Meir, with clenched fists an infant enters this world, as if to say, the whole world is mine to acquire. With hands wide open, we leave the world, as if to say, 
I have acquired nothing in this world. For so it is said, naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. Do not grieve for me too much. I am a spirit confident of my rights. Death is only an incident, and not the most important which happens to us in this state of being. On the whole, especially since I met you, my darling one, I have been happy. And you have taught me how noble a woman's heart can be. If there is anywhere else, I shall be on the lookout for you. Meanwhile, look forward, feel free, rejoice in life, cherish the children, guard my memory. God bless you. Continue on page 35, and you'll hear some of these readings have a very personal perspective. And I hope that even if the exact incident doesn't capture your relationship with your loved one, that perhaps there's components within that will be resonant with your own experience. I needed to talk to my sister, talk to her on the telephone. I mean, just as I used to every morning. In the evening, too, whenever the grandchildren said a sentence that clasped both of our hearts. I called. Her phone rang four times. You can imagine my breath stopped. Then there was a terrible telephonic noise. A voice said, this number is no longer in use. How wonderful, I thought. I can call again. They have not yet assigned her number to another person despite two years of absence due to death and we sit with our feelings of love and absence on this day.
continue silently.
the 23rd Psalm, I think is unique in human history. There are very few selections of words that have ever been written that have the power that this particular psalm does. Few words, not many lines. It guides us both to very difficult thoughts and to the heights of beauty, both at the same time. I'm not sure how it accomplishes that, but it's a very powerful psalm that reminds us of the places that we exist as we walk through this valley of the shadow of death. A phrase that to me reminds us that this place that we find ourselves in is not a place to run through. We're not trying to escape too quickly, and yet it's also not a place to sit in. We don't want to dwell there. We don't want to get stuck. We walk through that valley, and we walk through together. So on the top of page 44, let's read together these words of Psalm 23 that ask us to wrestle with the mysteries of life and death. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
With the cantor's permission, I would like to just take a quick moment to recognize that our incredible choir has been with us throughout these High Holy Days, of course, with Ben conducting and Jim accompanying, but truly their magnificence lifts our prayers to the heavens. So on behalf of the congregation, thank you all. By now, I'm sure that every one of you has heard all about the Broadway show Hamilton. I'm looking at my younger son, Abraham, who demanded at some point during the High Holy Days to mention Hamilton. Here it is. It swept the nation over the past few years. We actually did take our boys to see it recently, a last hurrah in Chicago over the summer, and it was just as mesmerizing as advertised. Wonderful cast, dynamic music, I could go on and on. Most of the conversation has been about the incredible energy of this show, combining modern hip hop with our American revolutionary story. But one thing easily can get missed in all the hoopla, that Lynn manuel Miranda wrote a play that is deeply impactful on an emotional level. Hamilton is not really a show about the revolution, it's not really a show about the way Alexander Hamilton helped create our great nation. It is a rich and deeply meaningful and personal story about one man's struggle to succeed in life and how that struggle impacts those closest to him. A little more than a year ago, Rachel Ann and I received some devastating news from good friends who live in Los Angeles. Their family of five was out for a summer weekend boating on Lake Arrowhead, as they have done many times, when their almost five-year-old son tragically fell from the boat and drowned. He was a happy, boisterous child with an affinity for glitter and bright colors. For so many friends with their own young families, this was not only a horrible tragedy, but a painful reminder that terrible things sometimes do happen in our world. There was no reason, no silver lining, no explanation. Just a family and their community suddenly needing to find some way to cope, and the rest of us crying from afar. One of the most heart-wrenching moments in Hamilton is when Alexander and his wife lost their own son in a tragic way. The grief on stage is palpable and takes the audience uncomfortably to our own sorrowing memories. In perhaps the show's most passionate song, Miranda reaches into our hearts as his characters sing. There are moments that the words don't reach. There is suffering too terrible to name. You hold your child as tight as you can and push away the unimaginable. There are moments that the words won't reach. There is a grace too powerful to name. We push away what we can never understand. We push away the unimaginable. Each of us is here today for the same reason. And each of us is here today under different circumstances. Some of us are remembering loved ones who are blessed to reach old age. Some remember those who fought illness or injury in the prime of life. And some of us painfully are here remembering more tragic circumstances. Every loss is unique. Every loss brings about emotion and our own suffering in different ways. A parent, a spouse, a child, a close relative, a good friend. Life is a patchwork of moments spent and memories made with the people who journey with us. Even if we personally are not dealing with a tragedy like our friends in California or like that in Hamilton, those situations, I believe, can help each of us understand our own difficult circumstances. In describing the journey that one particular family is going through, I take it for granted that grief transcends any specific memory and that grief descends upon each of us in our own personal ways. 
Lin-Manuel Miranda, of course, is not Jewish. He is an incredible purveyor of human experience and has provided us with an important reflection on how some people handle loss. But our Jewish tradition also offers deep insights into the human condition and specifically the process we go through when we lose someone. To the Jewish mind, grief is not unimaginable. In fact, our tradition asks us to face the intense emotions of grief directly. Grief comes to every one of us. The only questions are when and how will we deal with it? So we do not typically say things like, he passed away or she has departed. We say, my mom died. It is a stark statement of values, a reminder to us that while death is sad, heartbreaking, sometimes tragic, it is also part of life. It is something we can prepare for and it is something we can endure with the support of our friends and our family and with the help of a tradition that provides us with a framework for dealing with those moments that truly are not unimaginable. From each step in funeral preparations, to the depths of sitting Shiva, to the surreal transition of our 30-day Shloshim, to 11 months of reciting Kaddish, to your site every year, there is a path. There is a path. It may be a difficult one. The steps may not be easy, but they are waiting for us, wrapping us in a cocoon of God's love so that if nothing else, we understand that we are not walking along this path alone. My friend in Los Angeles said at one point that there is no vacation from grief. Her life continued, it had to. Her other children needed her to make sure they were not overcome by their shared loss, to help them make sure that their lives would continue to be as magical and as loving as they deserved to be. But the grief was always present. We all do what we have to do. We walk, we work, we dance and laugh for the sake of certain people and for the sake of comfortable situations. We find a way to contain our grief, except for these occasions when we are not supposed to contain it, when we are not supposed to hold back, when we are not only allowed but encouraged to rage and cry and shudder to live within the grief that might consume us if we didn't walk the path back toward life. Yizker is a gift. Our Jewish heritage understands that we can take comfort in sitting here a few times each year, surrounded by others who have also experienced loss, others who have lived with it for a short time or for a long while those who don't need words to simply look us in the eye and recognize that we are in the same sorrowing place. A place where grief does not go away. A place with difficult days when it is more intense and a place with good days when it almost feels as if it isn't part of our lives anymore. But a place where it is never quite gone. And perhaps that is ultimately what is unimaginable. Not the loss itself, but the realization that it will forever be part of us. That we cannot close our eyes, but must adapt to the world. A world without those most precious to us. Ultimately, it doesn't matter if we see it on a stage hear it from friends, or endure loss in our own families. We are here, each of us, seeking reassurance. We are here, each of us, seeking comfort. We are here, each of us, seeking answers. We are here, each of us, seeking connection. And we are here for each other. At this first Yizker of 5,778, 
May all of our loved ones be remembered for a blessing. And may we each find what we have come here for, a sense of well-being in the peace that endures among us and will continue to endure among all Israel. Please join me in saying, Amen. As we turn to page 45 in our booklets, we rise together. Together. Merciful God, God Most High, let there be perfect rest for the souls of our loved ones who have gone into eternity. May they find shelter in your presence among the holy and pure, whose light shines like the radiance of heaven. Compassionate God, hold them close to you forever. May their souls be bound up in the bond of eternal life. May they find a home in you, and may they rest in peace. Together we say, Amen. Please be seated. All who mourn the loss of loved ones, and at this hour remember the sweet companionship and the cherished hopes that have passed away with them, give ear to the word of comfort spoken in the name of God. Only the body has died and has returned to the dust. The spirit lives in the shelter of God's love and mercy. Our loved ones live on as well in the remembrance of those to whom they were precious, their deeds of loving kindness, the true and beautiful words they spoke are treasured as inspiration for deeds by which the living honor the dead. And when we ask in our grief, from where will our help come? Then in the strength of faith, let us answer with the psalmist. Our help will come from God. God will not forsake us or leave us in our grief. Upon the Holy One we cast our burden, and God will grant us strength to live out the days apportioned to us. All life comes from God. All souls are in God's keeping. Come then, all who share in this community of sympathy and support. Let us rise and hallow the name of God. Our thoughts turn to loved ones whom death has taken from us in recent days and those who died at this season in years past. Our hearts open as well to the wider circles of loss in our community and wherever grief touches the human family. We think now as a temple family of those members of this community we have lost in the past year since Yom Kippur of last year. Melvin Barnett, Herman Bennett, Evelyn Bergman, Nancy Blatt, Fred Brown, Lucille Cherney, Janice Cohen, Rosemary Kalias, Clifford Crane, M. Kenneth Dickstein, Pauline Dubin, A.B. Eigel, 
Arthur A. Elkin, Betty Jane Fisher, Daniel Franklin, Maddie Frederick, Joseph Garlock, Lee J. Garvin, Marilyn Giles, Erwin Glasser, Betty Jane Gonsarowski, Joel H. Goodman, Roy Goodman, Samantha K. Goodman, Norman Greenberg, Tenny Greenberg, Mickey Greenfield, Goldie Greer, Saul Grossman, Herbert Eisner, Beatrice Cantor, Joy Ann Kaplan, Werner J. Kaplan, William Katz, Barbara Kay, Maurice Kelman, Joshua Max Kent, Thelma Kerwin, Steve Kogan, Florine Karatkin, Doris May Kushner, Etta Lawrence, Hannah Littman, Beverly Lopayton, Jeanette McWilliams, Janet Mann, Dina McFadden, Elaine Mostyn, Maggie Ozer, Deborah Packard, B. Phillips, Jack Pludwinski, Phyllis Potash, Phyllis Ruth Reamer, George Roberts, Jock Rosenfeld, Tony Rosenfeld, Alan Lloyd Rothberger, Helen Rowan, Carla Rudorf, Robert L. Sadoff, John Schneider, Marianne Schwartz, Jean Shapiro, Barbara Simon Luria, Elaine Stern, Shirley Unger, Irma Wald, Marjorie Weisberg, Mildred Weiss, Robert Welling, Robert Winfield, Selma Winston, and Samuel Wolk. We also remember these past spiritual leaders of our temple, Rabbi Samuel Marcus, Rabbi Liebman Adler, Rabbi Abraham Laser, Rabbi Isidore Kalish, Rabbi Elias Epstein, Rabbi Kaufman Kohler, Rabbi Emanuel Gerechter, Rabbi Leopold Wintner, Rabbi Heinrich Zerndorf, Rabbi Louis Grossman, Rabbi Leo M. Franklin, Rabbi B. Benedict Glazer, Rabbi Richard C. Hertz, Rabbi Elmer Berger, Rabbi Eric Friedland, Rabbi Milton Rosenbaum, Rabbi Sanford Saperstein, Rabbi David Schoenberger, Rabbi Richard Weiss, Irving Katz, Jason Tickton, and Cantor Stephen Dubov. We hold each of them in our hearts, along with all other loved ones that we are thinking of at this time. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing in this new year and always. Please rise as we join together on page 47 for the words of Mourner's Kaddish. Yitgadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah, be'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute, b'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uv'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shmei rabah mevorach le'olam ulalmei almaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit naseh. V'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shemei d'kudsha b'richu. L'eilam in kol b'rchata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechamata. D'amiran be'alma v'yimru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shamaya v'chaim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Ose shalom bimromav hu ya ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. May each of them continue to be a blessing in our own lives and let's all together say amen.
Last night on my way to services for Col Nidre, there was this gigantic dark cloud and there was the sun beginning to set and they were kind of battling it out and I was enjoying watching this and then suddenly uh, and there was like rain and gusts and I looked to my left and there was this gigantic double rainbow. And so I hope that even with the dark cloud of grief that your loved ones can provide that light that produces these beautiful rainbows of the full range of human emotion. And now, as dark begins to get to falling, uh, we turn to our Ne'ila, our last chance to make rainbows of our own on our Yom Kippur day. Page 48, we read responsively. The long day is over and the gates are closing. Slowly day fades into dusk. Soon the earth will darken. Our bodies weak and weary, our inner strength undiminished. This day has been a gift uncluttered time, free from hurry and routine, appointments or assignments, time to face our sins and imperfections, our dreams and yearnings for the life we want to live, a time to leave the clamor of the world and attend to the voice within. Long ago, the temple gates were locked at dusk. So too, at this hour, the gates of Yom Kippur begin to close. Have we done all that needed to be done, said everything that needed to be said? The gates of God's compassion never close, but soon enough, our lives close in on us. Now, in the silence of the soul, now, before the holy day comes to an end, release the unshed tears, the deepest prayers locked in our heart. Please be seated. On page 49, Yearning, just a moment, a shaft of sunlight in the fog, a shift of mind and heart, a breath of peace, just a moment, that's all I ask, to feel you there, to know your touch, to see the truth behind these words we speak. At the end of this long day, one last chance to stand before you, exhausted as I am, I still have hope, just a moment. Let me pray. So with our Ne'ila comes our final time to ask for forgiveness, to forgive. And what I want to bring forth in this moment is the possibility of also forgiving oneself. We've thought all day about maybe what we've done to others, what they've done to us, but maybe for this last time, can take a moment internally to think for what we need to forgive ourselves before we can fully begin our new year. Thank you. 
grows long hearing this incredible music just continues to move me on page 49 when we refrain from indulging our physical appetites for a limited period in order to devote ourselves for a time more exclusively to demands that rank higher in our hierarchy of values we are not denying the physical appetites their just place in life we are simply recognizing the need of putting them in their place we join together. This is the fast I chose. It reminds me that I can master the appetites of my body and decide when and how I will satisfy them. This is the fast I chose, lifting me for this one holy day above my animal nature. This is the fast I chose. It teaches me that I am a human being capable of reflection, self-discipline, and moral behavior. I chose this fast as an act of purification. I rededicate myself to a life of purpose. I chose this fast as an act of solidarity. I link myself to my Jewish brothers and sisters everywhere. I chose this fast as a spur to compassion. I will not forget those who hunger and suffer all over the earth. As my ancestors once drew near to you, by making an offering on the altar. So I have made an offering of myself, my bodily strength diminished, my pride brought low. Willingly and intentionally, I chose this fast. May I carry its lessons with me when I leave this place. Seal us for holiness and blessing in the book of life, for you are holy and your name is holy, and we yearn to enter your gates in holiness. We read together. Open the gates of righteousness for us. Open the gates that we may enter and praise the eternal. Open the gates for us, for all Israel, and for people everywhere the gates of acceptance and atonement, beauty and creativity, the gates of dignity, empathy and faith, the gates of generosity and hope, insight and joy, the gates of knowledge and love, meaning and nobility, the gates of openness, patience and the quest for peace, the gates of renewal, song and tranquility, the gates of understanding and virtue, the gates of wisdom and wonder, exaltation, youth, and old age, the gates of Zion, reborn and rebuilt in our time. Open the gates, open them wide, show us the way to enter. Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu, our God and God of all generations, on this great Sabbath of forgiveness, Forgive our moral failings. On this great Sabbath of goodness, teach us to be satisfied with your goodness. On this great Sabbath of atonement, purify our hearts to serve you in truth. Blessed are you, Adonai. Year after year, you set us on the path from guilt to holiness. Our God and God of all generations, let us feel your nearness. Let us know your love. Baruch Ata Aronai, Hamchazir Shechinato Litzion. Let our eyes and hearts experience your presence in Zion. We continue together. God of goodness, mercy, and hope, we are grateful for your gifts of love and compassion. Seal us today for a life of integrity lived in covenant with you. God of peace, grant us peace, your most precious gift. 
You have given us freedom to choose between good and evil, life and death. May we choose life and good, that our children may inherit from us the blessing of peace. May we and the whole family of Israel be remembered and sealed in the book of life. Blessed is forgiveness, and blessed are goodness, mercy, and love. Blessed is the nearness of divine presence, and blessed is the hope for peace. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ose HaShalom. You are the Blessed One, the Eternal One, source of peace. <laughs> a gate for us when the gates are being closed, for the day is about to fade. The day shall end, the sun shall set. Let us enter your gates. Holy One, we pray, please be patient. Please pardon and forgive. Please show compassion. Please lead us to atonement and help us, please help us to conquer injustice and triumph over sin. You hold out your hand to those who do wrong. Your right hand opens wide to receive those who return. You teach us the true purpose of confession, to turn our hands into instruments of good, to cause no harm or oppression. Receive us as you promised in the fullness of our heartfelt teshuvah. At this time, as the shadows grow long outside, as we get closer and closer to the end of our Yom HaKippurim, I would like to invite our shofar core, the individuals who will be blowing shofar for us at the end of the day to take their places around the sanctuary, each of them in a spot to help us fully realize the meaning of the final moment that we will share. Cindy Balakowski, Jim Deutschman, Abe Miller, Maury Miller, Bruce Plisner, and Steve Weiner. As they take their places, we rise together in the middle of page 53. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Bechanu. From this place of prayer and community, we will soon return to our homes. May we take with us the spirit of this day, Melech HaFetz Bachaim, sovereign God who treasures life. Help us turn our homes into havens of your love, 
sanctuaries of your compassion. Let them be shelters against the storm, dwelling places for all that is life-giving and good. We read together in English, starting at the top of page 54. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, welcome our prayer with love, accept and embrace it. Avinu Malkenu, act for the sake of your boundless compassion. Avinu Malkenu, act toward us as befits your name. Avinu Malkenu, seal us in the book of sustenance and livelihood. Avinu Malkenu, seal us in the book of worthiness and merit. Avinu Malkenu, seal us in the book of forgiveness and pardon. Avinu Malkenu, seal us in the book of lives well lived. Avinu Malkenu, seal us in the book of redemption and renewal. Avinu Malkenu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu Malkenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, renew us for a year of goodness. Avinu Malkenu, we have no sovereign but you. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace when our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. together on page 56. We stand as one before the gates of a new year, renewed by this day of atonement, made stronger by all who are with us and by those whose presence we feel within. As the long day fades into dusk, we join our voices in words of hope and dedication. Pithu lanu share tzedek navo vam no deya. Open for us the gates of righteousness that we may enter and praise the eternal source of life. Open for us the gates of sacred community that we may enter and feel its healing power. Open for us the gates of truth and integrity that we may enter and grow in faithfulness. Open for us the gates of devotion and principle that we may enter and find enduring values and meaning. Open for us the gates of repentance and return, that we may enter and offer our best. Open for us the gates of forgiveness, that we may enter and offer our humanity. Open for us the gates of kindness and compassion, that we may enter and offer our love. In just a moment, you will hear Rabbi Syme call out the magical words of our tradition, when he does, we will have the opportunity once again this year to hear. The commandment is to hear, to hear the rolling shofar blast go around this sanctuary. You will see the shofars all around the room and hear the blast all around you. As soon as that is over, as soon as the blast recedes from our ears, I'd ask that you please, for just a moment, stay where you are at your seats so that the clergy can depart first. We would like to go just outside to greet you as you depart. We have some juice and honey cake outside to formally break our fast and a brief havdalah for you. So again, as we leave here, we'll meet you right outside on the patio. 
and we'll wish you well outside. We turn to the last page, page 57, for the finale to our Yom Kippur together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'olam Ha'ed 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 Adonai hu ha Elohim. 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 Marchatima Tova, may it be a wonderful year ahead. Shana Tova, everyone.